What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Video Game Book Club here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. I'm Greg Miller, and if you didn't know, each and every month over at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, we put up a tier that is the Video Game Book Club. Three people support that tier. Then they get to come here and talk about whatever video game we put. So you see, that's how it is. It's like, it's it, there's no reading involved, unless it's like dang and romp or something, and you gotta read about Mama Kuma. But in reality, what it is, is the fact that, yeah, you know, you have all this stuff going on, you get to go in here, you get to play these great games, do all these different things. Now I'm gonna expand up my chat window here, because I had it the way I wanted it, and then I moved it, and then of course, old Explit over here went all wanky-janky on me, because that's what it does. I'm Greg Miller, and I'm joined by all of our guests today. Uh, first off, introducing, uh, we call him Gunplay. Steven, what are you up? What's up, Steven? Hey, Greg. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's good. Now, now, Steven, of course, you were a jerk and didn't actually beat Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, correct? You didn't even play it. Uh, no, I played at the beginning. I remember when, and I, originally on the PSP, I played up to a tank part, and then I stopped playing completely. And then I lost my save on the PSP, and then I loaded on my Vita, get ready to play the book club, and just life happened, and then forgot. Don't, don't blame life. This is on you. This is on you. <laughs> But I'm yeah. happy you're here. At least you can talk a little bit about what you've played before, how, how you've had a, your experiences and the whatnots yes. and who has. Curtis, how are you? Introduce yourself. Doing well. Uh, yeah, my name's Curtis. I'm uh, living in Colorado right now, and uh, I, I just finished law school. And I also have to admit I did not beat uh, Peace Walker, but I did play through about four-fifths of it, so I'm almost done. That's fine. I'll, 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 I'll accept that. It's better than Steven. Better than Steven. Yeah. Steven, you let us down. I can't. Hmm. You're a piece of work, Steven. And over here is Zyger. Everybody knows you. What's up, Zyger? Yay. Hi, guys. Uh, first and foremost, tell us all about what happened with your Amiibos. I know you, I know from the last one, you were a huge Amiibo fan. You, you, were yeah. on the, you were on the book club. You guys, of course, were on the book club last time with uh, Yoshi's Island because uh, we forgot to turn it off and ask you to leave. And you, you stayed, so thank you. Thanks for your support, of course. But, uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, how's your Amiibo obsession going, Zyger? Uh, I got them all so far. I'm just waiting for two of them in the mail. But yeah, every single one. Got them all. Awesome. I'm already playing the next one. All right, now, do you have Silver Mario back there? Is he out yet? Panda Musk was very, very excited about this Silver Mario. Yeah, time. Silver Mario's here. I got Gold Mario here. I got regular Mario over there somewhere, maybe. Yeah, so you just got Mario's out the ass, pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I've already said, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. This was the book club. Book club. Of the month, I guess you call it. Uh, well, hold on, I guess it's the first things first. Zyger, did you beat it? Oh, uh, yeah, I actually beat it. I beat it like an hour ago. Okay, wow. Well, you were, just like, you were just like right there at the end. You're like, I want to make sure I make this, yeah. get this done. I, I wanted to make sure I got it done. I didn't want to be the only one. Turns out I was the only one who beat it. Hey, I beat I it. Know, obviously. Exactly. Well, yeah, not obviously. obviously. When I did the Metroid book club, I was like, that game sucks. I didn't even fucking beat it. Um, no, but here we're here talking about Peace Walker. This is a game near and dear to my heart. It is, of course... My favorite video game of all time. It, it stole, for me, the title from original Metal Gear Solid on PlayStation 1. That was a game I was talking about right then in my life was the one that came along at a time when I thought I might be aging out of video games. That maybe I was getting too old for what was happening on the N64 and then bought a PS1, bought SmackDown, and then ran into this Metal Gear game. And for me, that was the switch that got thrown where I was like, oh shit, this is like the future of games, to be totally cliche and stuff. That we can tell these stories, we can do all these different things. And so then... Every time Metal Gear comes around, I feel like there's that, oh, will this take my place with uh, the next my, being my favorite game? And Metal Gear 2, I thought, had a chance with the gameplay. Metal Gear 3, I was not a big fan of. Metal Gear 4 was great fan service. But for me, Peace Walker is the one that caught me off guard. You know, you, you get a PSP Metal Gear game, and you're like, eh, what's this going to be like? To sit down, to play it, it became my favorite Metal Gear of all time. And now, years later, my favorite game of all time. Zyger, am I completely crazy? No, this game is amazing. Literally, throughout the entire <coughs> game, I thought it was over. I thought it was going to end. Then it keeps on going, and it just keeps becoming greater and greater. Mm -hmm. The entire time, I was like, oh, wow, is this over yet? No? Okay, good. Especially like, after one point, it shows credits, and then the game continues onward from there. It's sure. Like, wow. Well, see, even for me now, I, I was lucky enough. I was talking about it for... Peace Walker Hole is a special place in my heart for a number of reasons, but for one, it was like the best review event I'd ever been sent on. You know, some games don't like to send out code early. Instead, they like to bring you somewhere to play. And Peace Walker was done in a hotel in San Francisco over a two-day period where basically they had a giant conference ballroom. We came in, sat down, and played Peace Walker nonstop, a bunch of journos elbow to elbow playing on the PSP. And so for me, there was that thing of I played through it and I beat it. 
and credits rolled, and then there's you know more missions, all this other stuff. I remember n having have someone tell me of the fact because I started bitching about the whole pause thing. Of course, pause, you know, spoilers. We're gonna spoil this game if you haven't played it. We'll dance around it the best I can. But there's this whole thing, of course, the fact that like. Paz is in it, she's this underage girl, but then you can kind of sex her up if you play the game right. And I thought that was super weird for Big Boss, right? But then is revealed, some kid told me eventually, like, well, she's older than that, and you had to go find the true ending, and da-da-da-da. That's something that's never... I mean, I like that fine. You, when you know it's coming, it's not a big deal. But at the time, it was a pain in the ass trying to realize that I didn't beat it. I mean, Zyger is the guy who beat it. Are you sure you beat it, or do you just think you beat it? Are you sure you beat it, beat it, beat it? Uh... I would have to double check. See? I only did it like an hour ago. I know, but that's the thing you never know. So, like, all right, for you, Zyger, explain to me what your ending was. What, what do you think happened? Where was your ending? Uh, the Peace Walker thing was about to shoot nukes. They had... It was a final boss fight. Or, I, know, I can't think. There was a final boss battle, and then at some point, it after they beat it, it walked into the ocean. Okay. So have you fought Paz? Uh, she, peace, uh, don't Pause. think yeah. so. All right, there you go. You haven't. See, there's another ending to this game now you got to go find out about. And that's one of the brilliant things. About, but we're getting way off track. Steven, I want you to know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to yell at you. I understand not being able to, you know, not getting to beat a game, life coming about. Life's a big problem for all of us. From what you played of Peace Walker, what did you think of Peace Walker? Uh, I thought it felt just like a console Metal Gear. 100%. There's no there was no little things that actually told me that this was a uh, a portable game whatsoever. Right. I mean from the voice work from the the actual like every all the voice work from the graphics like I you know I played it on my Vita uh with uh and used my two doys L, L2 and R2. I was going to say that looks pretty dope. Let me see that. Hold that up again. What do you got? A little higher. Oh, there you go. All right. That is, yeah, that's, all right, all right, all right, I see what you're up to. Um, but it felt like I was holding, what with this, anyways, I felt like I was holding a, like, a PlayStation controller in my hand with the screen, and I was playing it on, like, a console-quality game. I was, sure. like, remote playing an actual game. <laughs> um, and the controls are awesome. I was using my dual analog sticks, felt completely, it was just pretty much like it felt like a console game on to be it itself. Now, Curtis, do you agree? No, nah, I actually don't. Uh, Curtis, I don't agree. Curtis, we're so losing your connection. I'm sorry. We're going to okay. have to let you go. Really? No, I'm fucking oh, wrong no. because you don't like the you're game. You're messing with me. Yeah, exactly. I have, really, I have, really, I have really slow internet, so you're, you're uh, <laughs> scaring me. Um, no, so this is the first Metal Gear game I've uh, ever played in depth. I paid, played maybe, I know, I know, I'm sorry. I played about 10 minutes of uh, Ground Zeroes, uh, and I just kind of got onto other games. And then sure. Metal Gear Solid 4, I played for all of like five minutes, and I was just like, what the hell is going on? I waited for 45 minutes for it to install back in the day, and then <laughs> I played it for five minutes, and I was like, this guy's smoking a cigarette. I don't have any idea what he's doing, uh, and I kind of just quit that. Um, but I thought that it felt like a handheld experience, and I played it on the PS3, and I felt like it showed mm -hmm. through on the Legacy Collection uh, pretty bad. I mean, the the levels were so piecemeal. You know, you'd walk to an area, an area was only, especially in the beginning, the areas were so small that it really felt like you were kind of going, you know, piecemeal a little by little. And I don't know if that's like other Metal Gear games because I've never oh. played any. No, um, that's, not, that's not how it's, uh, other Metal Gears feel now. Yeah, but I, I do agree with Steven, though, that in other ways, it definitely felt like a console experience. The voice acting, I, I don't like Snake's voice, and I don't know if that's blasphemy as well. Um, I'm, I like it is, interviews it is, with David Hayter. It is blasphemy that yeah. you don't like David Hayter's voice. I, I like David Hayter in his regular voice, but his Snake voice is a little off-putting to someone who isn't in the series. But uh, I thought the presentation, the menus, everything were awesome. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, that was the interesting thing about Peace Walker and why I was so, at the time, blown away by it is that being a Metal Gear fan for so many years and expecting these huge experiences that when Kojima says, you know, they're putting he's putting out this game, he's behind it, it's a real thing, you're like, okay, let's see if it's a real thing. And to get it and to play it and to see that it was built from the ground up for the portable. You know, the levels are broken up, the levels are smaller, but that's because they built it for the schmucks like me that are riding the train and have, you know, 
15 to 45 minutes to go through and beat something and go through and experience something. And so for me, it also played into the power fantasy of being the big boss, right? Of being Naked Snake. And the fact that, like, I could go in there and own areas. Like, for me, one of the things about Metal Gear Solid 3 that I didn't like is the fact... I remember that game feeling overwhelming and me, me feeling like... I didn't really have a chance in the matter, right? That guards were on top of me, they discovered where I was, there's too many guys. Like, it was weird things because, for me, it was easier to wrap my head around, you know, Metal Gear Solid 1 and Metal Gear Solid 2 because they were set in an industrial, concrete kind of place. Whereas in the jungle, it didn't feel as natural for me to be moving around hiding. So then you get to Peace Walker and I felt like it took everything that I loved about Metal Gear 1 and 2 and combined it with a portable franchise that I could be a part of. I agree that it didn't feel the same way, but now we have to get to, of course, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain and see how they parlay that into it, especially after all that Ground Zero stuff. We already know a little bit about it. I mean, Zyger, for you, I, was it a problem that it was smaller levels, that things were a little bit different? No, I actually enjoyed that. It's going to be an odd comparison, but Metal Gear Peace Walker reminded me of Final Fantasy Type Zero, a portable experience. It's entirely mission-based, and the story was pretty good. I played it mostly on the Vita. I did like the first hour on 360, but then I had to keep moving from places and it was just better to, to play it on the Vita on the go. Sure. So I played it on my Vita and I thought it felt more like a console experience and I enjoyed it. Even though everything was more smaller scale, I felt like it wasn't a problem at all. And then Curtis, did I cut you off or was it Steven? Somebody was about to say something. Uh, no, I, well, I was just gonna say like, to be clear, I, a, I really do like to be game, clear. I, to be clear, you're a monster. I understand yeah, to, to be clear, clear. but I, I I really did like the game. I just don't think it was. I I just didn't think it was console uh, quality in terms of you know playing it a, a while later, a while removed on a PS3. It was really cool. And then I was I was thinking the same thing that Zyger and Steven were that maybe this is better, or maybe they weren't thinking it, but maybe this is better on a handheld. So I took out my Vita. And I was about to transfer it, and then I was like, uh, I don't know if I don't know if I can get it back if I transfer it to the Vita, and it was this whole big mess uh, trying to figure out how to even do that. And I just ended up quitting and kept playing on PS3. So I think that you labeling it as like one of the best games of all time, I could see where you're coming from, but I think that it is of a place in time. It's very tough to you know in three three generations from now, someone's going to go back and play this game. It's going to be hard for them to do it. No, that's a great point, and that makes sense for me. For me, when it came to PS3 in the collection, that was my thing of like, finally, I'm going to get trophies for this game I love, I can't wait, and I jumped in, and when you take the PSP screen and blow it up to a 50 at the time inch screen or whatever, and you look at it, it was like, ooh, there are no textures here, and there this is a blocky thing, but I, I went back and watched my video review for IGN for your Peace Walker before this on the PSP, and when... You look at it boiled down on what it was the PSP screen, it looks so much better than when it was blown up. I can totally understand it not standing the test of time and you playing it. And I mean, I think saying it had a place in time is a really, really good point about it, everything that happened in it. So then, Steven. Yeah. What's the last thing you did in Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker before life caught up to you? Um, last thing I did was actually... Uh, I, was, I played it on the train and stuff like I did going to and from work. Uh, was the was Snake was actually talking to um, the Chico. Basically, he, fir he first meets Paz, and that's oh, it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Not like in the beginning. When in the beginning, when you can uh, do the really creepy, first meets Paz, when you can do the really right. creepy zoom and go underneath her clothes. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Interesting move, Mr. Kojima. No, but I mean, like, that th that's actually, you know, an interesting place. I mean, it's early in the game, of course. Your life got in the way. I understand how that goes. But I think it speaks to the fact, I want to know your impression just there, first impression of how the cutscenes were done. And the fact that they're basically comic book panels. You never have to turn on subtitles because everything's on on the screen. And then the fact that I thought they were just beautiful. And I, I really liked it. For me, that was one of the ways around the fact that they weren't, it's a console quality experience without being on a console at the time, right? In design, the fact that you didn't need crazy cutscenes, you were able just to draw these cutscenes. Did those work for you, Stephen? Uh, yeah, definitely. I loved those actually because uh, it's done in the original Metal Gear Metal Gear art style, mm -hmm. and I just loved the way it looked. It they worked beautifully because you actually like uh when they're talking and everything at the voiceovers, you're actually pretty much just drawn into the world still. Yeah, she. I would. It's 
you're drawn into it more so than if it would actually be in game because you would actually because of the PSP you would get weird wonky animations and everything like that and it wouldn't actually be more immersive than uh, like the comics were I think sure sure and then Zyre did it work for you too did you like these kind of cutscenes I love those cutscenes. The entire time I was playing the game, I was looking forward to the next cutscene because I just love the way they presented it, the whole art style and everything. I never played a Metal Gear before this, so I don't know if the other ones do this as well. But this entire thing was amazing and I loved it and I want to see more of it. Okay, so now are you gonna go are you gonna finally correct the wrongs? The fact that you are on this fucking looking over your shoulder, you got 30,000 goddamn amiibos, you can't play a Metal Gear. Are you gonna finally fix this and go play other Metal Gears now? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, I talked to Devin CM and Sean Christer. Oh, we know them. And they both told me to play Metal Gear. Good. I'm glad. Uh, that's a good thing. Curtis, same questions for you, I guess. Did cutscenes work? Because it's interesting. I, I was, you know, complimenting the fact that uh, in these cutscenes, the word bubbles pop up, and then you're getting narration over the comic book as well. Over in the chat on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, Manny on the moon says he hates the always on subs. But for me, this wasn't beating you over the head with the subtitles being on. I never even thought about it until I played it, I think, later on on the PlayStation 3, the fact that it was a brilliant solution to it. Did it work for you, Curtis, or was it a game-breaking experience? Oh, no, it, it absolutely worked for me. I thought that the art style was great, like Steven was saying. Um, I liked the quick time events. I'm trying to think back to you know to this place in time and i was trying to think if people hated quick time events yet uh because yeah. i feel like now everyone's kind of like saying it's a cop out but i felt like they were smartly designed like when you're uh chasing after i think it might be the peace walker it might be the the thing flying towards where the peace walker is but you have to dodge the missiles by kind of going sure. forward or backward a little bit i thought it was really well done and in terms of story i felt that this was a really self-contained uh story that i could actually access not knowing anything mm -hmm. i felt like maybe snake eater probably was spoiled for me a little bit in terms of uh, well, again, Curtis, i'm assuming fuck you. fuck you for not playing I, I, snake eater by that point come on i bought i, I bought legacy edition I'm, i plan on playing it if that if that makes you feel any better uh, all of them i guess yeah uh, but uh, but no, I thought that the the story was uh, very well contained, uh, and for people talking about how crazy Metal Gear story is, this one felt accessible. No, I mean that's the nail on the head for me, and I always talk about the fact that one of the reasons I love Peace Walker so much, and probably one of the reasons I love Metal Gear Solid One so much, is that the stories aren't fucking batshit insane and you don't need to know 30 years of history you know what I mean mm -hmm. Peace Walker you could come in you could be a, a nerdy Metal Gear fanboy like myself and know all about the Lalelu level and all these different things and how they all tie back in together and this crazy ass shit that goes on with Raiden but if you don't if you just pick it up for the first time all you need to know right is explaining that first me mega cutscene where it's you pick it up pauses here I don't believe you. And he's like, all right, fine. The real reason we're here is this tape recorder. And it's like, you know, you killed this woman. You now hear her voice on this tape recorder. You need to go find out what's really happening. And for me, that was like, yes, let's go. And that's why, Steven, I can't believe you let your real life get in the way of this. Well, I just want to say that Ash, I beaten the first Metal Gear Solid at least five times, okay. beat the second one, and I beat the fourth one as well. I tried the third one. It wasn't really for me with all the uh, the, the, the jungle. Camouflage, the, the and snake yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I understand. I hear but, you. Yeah, but the other ones were just uh, amazing. And actually just got Ground Zeroes on Plus. So oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, you're going to have a great time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the, how, where Metal Gear is going gameplay-wise. Now, Zyger, talk to me a little bit about it. As the, as the man who crossed the finish line here, did the story hold up for you throughout? Yeah. Uh, like you said in the very beginning, that one big cutscene that explains to you basically the events that happen in the third game, right? Right. That's the third one that happened before this. So yeah, you kill this big boss person. No? You're shaking your head. I'm just giving you a hard time that you didn't know. I'm like, oh god, these kids these days. Again, <laughs> stop buying amiibos and play a video game. That's all you gotta do, Zyger. No, you're, and, 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 and no, your big boss, boss, the boss was before you. That's your mentor. Yeah, you kill this person, and then you have to find them. And throughout the entire game, I thought the story was like leading up to the point where you find them again. Yeah. Turns out, no, they're actually dead, and it's actually like an AI based on them. Was Which like, was okay. great! It was! I love that. I was like, okay, so she is dead. She didn't survive somehow. But you have to end up killing her again near the end, or at least in the end I got. No, yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're right. There, there's a whole, you, you get to talk to her a bunch of times, and she rationally, you know, she talks to you, Jack, Jack, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, 
that shit was awesome. You know what I mean? Because like for me, that that was what was so. Like first off, I want to I want to call somebody out here in the head. over here. Crust in Tier Seven says the story is boring in Peace Walker. You go to hell, Crust in Tier. The story in Peace Walker is not boring. It's very exciting and interesting, and it's it's got layers to it in a way I don't think a lot of the Metal Gear games before it did. You know what I mean? Metal Gear, I, and that's I guess a knock because Metal Gear Solid for sure did amazing characters in that. Metal Gear Solid Two, we get to know Raiden, and whether you like him or not, it's your thing. Three is where I thought it didn't connect with me. The whole like, I'm I'm you know at the time Naked Snake and Boss is my mentor and I'm in love with her, so I'm heartbroken that this is happening and all these different things. But, like, having completed three, you start Peace Walker, and that's where it's, like, you see the weight on his shoulders where he doesn't want to be called Big Boss. He doesn't want to talk about all these different things. He doesn't want to even acknowledge what he's gone through on a personal level, the fact that he had to kill his mentor. So when it pops up and you get that first tape recorder, again, this is as a fan who knows everything about it or whatever, you get that first tape recorder and you hear that voice and you see his reaction. By the time we get to the payoff of... All right, we're going to see you for the first time. Where are you, boss? And it's a fucking giant garbage can. You're like, what? That doesn't make any goddamn sense at all. You know what I mean? Steven finally got sick of me insulting him and left. Good riddance, I say. No. <laughs> Good riddance, I say. Oh, no, Steven's still here. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not, it's not. Curtis left. Yes, exactly. Curtis is the one I hate. Everyone in the chat, give me a boo, Curtis. Everyone boo Curtis in the chat. But no, that was the thing of like, I thought that was so cool. And to get there, and then he has that moment again of just like, well, what do I do with it? This isn't boss, but it kind of could be. And where do we... I don't know. I had such a great time with this game. I'm, I am I love it. And everyone should love it, too. Hey, Curtis is back. Don't worry, Curtis. I wasn't talking shit about you. Oh, is he? Yes, I think I am. Okay. No, you are. I'm just giving you a hard time. I, you probably were talking shit. You joked about me what? being disconnected. No, it would never, actually happen. I would, never, <laughs> I, would never, I would never tell the entire chat to boo you. I would never <laughs> tell everyone to boo yeah. Curtis. It's, no, don't worry. That's not something I would do. I would just sit here and talk about Peace Walker. So now, Zyger, when you were playing it, at any point, did you need help? Because co-op was a big part of this in the PSP game. And in my review back in the day, one of the knocks I gave it was the fact that it seemed like everybody gets to at least one mission where they need someone to come in and bail them out. Uh, when I was playing through it... Uh, I felt like I needed help, but I didn't want to ask for help because I thought, oh, I'll just get better. I'll just get better. So sure. I just kept going at it. It was, I think, one of the first big boss battles. What was it? Poop, pupa or something? The pupa, yeah. Battle. The pupa. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first time where I thought, like, okay, I think I really need help with this. Because at first it looks intimidating as hell. I was like, okay, well, this is going to take some time to fight. But yeah, later missions, some of them were really hard, but it's like, it wasn't that bad. Okay. And I can see why needing help would be a big part of it. But sure. Yeah. Now, Curtis, did you ever get to the point where you needed help, or did you call anybody in? Did you play with anybody? Uh, no, I never called co-op. Although I did, I did kind of like how the game slightly pressed you that way. Like early on, there were a couple of things I tried to get on different routes in the levels, uh, and it said, "Man, a really another person to stand on top of, or you know, to get onto that ledge would actually yeah. be really helpful." And I was like, "Well, that actually does give me a reason to go back, you know, if I wanted to have an easier time with the levels." But I was using a guide, uh, so it actually helped uh, me figure out what was the best way to beat, you know, the bosses. Otherwise, I probably would have died a lot. So. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Death is part of life, as they say. But no, I hear what you're saying. Like that was the, one of the interesting things for me of playing Peace Walker. You know, again at this review event with people there. It was awesome to have people there so that when I was up against, you know, my, that first tank, that first armored vehicle that rolled up, like, I didn't have a rocket launcher yet. I only had mines and I think some grenades. So you bring different people in. They help you out. They're able to take it on. And then, of course, like, what at first I was worried about that aspect of the game actually being a detriment to getting out in the public, right? But... Of course, what I found with it, and eventually Sony patched it with Ad Hoc Party, if you remember, where you could play this through Ad Hoc Party since there wasn't a dedicated online mode. Um, w with the PSP version, I actually found me and my friends going out on basically Peace Walker dates. Where I remember, like, you know, Caleb from IGN and I would go out after work, get beers, and just sit there and play Peace Walker and grind to get better gear. I'd have Mike Pereira from IGN Media Mike over. He'd come over on the weekends and we'd play, and, like, you try to get these groups together to do it. And then the one I always tell, of course, is, like, when I went to PAX one year, I helped with the PlayStation blog set up a Metal Gear meet and greet where we all got together and played for like two and a half hours. And it was like, this was what I always felt the promise of the PSP was. You know what I mean? The fact that it would bring people together to play games together. And 
you know, th those games were few and far between, sadly. But Peace Walker really, really excelled at it, which I loved. And so, Zyger, you fucked up by not playing with anybody. Yeah. I don't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me. I'm turning down the quality of the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Google Hangout as the chat demands. Because that's how the chat demands it. So now we look like this. And maybe it'll be less laggy. So I hope you're happy, everybody. Jerks in the chat. Uh, what's the chat? Can I ask, you, can I ask an unrelated question, Greg? Sure. What's up, Curtis? If I, if I if I remember correctly, is this the origin of the urinal sandwich story on Podcast Beyond when you were at the review event? No, I don't think so. Was it really? I thought I thought it was, and then Clements came. Our Clements wasn't with you, but I could have sworn that that was the origin of it. I rem I remember. No, Clements wasn't with me. That was the thing, and he always. Did, but the problem with the Clements story and what you're referencing from Beyond is the fact that. It was something to do with uh, him at the urinal, and then it was the sandwich guy that put teriyaki sauce on his chicken sandwich that one time. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I thought I it was some guy we at have, the we, review event. No, no, no. We'd have to wake up. We have to wake up uh, Mitchell Morgan at some point and right now. Get it, we have to bring Mitchell Morgan out of cryogenic freeze right now to, for him <laughs> to explain the origins of that. S. Kovacs one says, "Thank you. I thought the lag was all me. No problem, S. Kovacs. You got to let me know if this works for you. I'm doing what I can to give you." What the fuck now? Crustin, Crustin Tier 7 again in the Twitch chat. I like every Metal Gear Solid game better. You, you're, you're fucking crazy. I, I, you, how could you like Metal Gear 4 in this? Now, Metal Gear 4, amazing game. Don't get me wrong, but better than Peace Walker? Are you crazy? Now, here's the thing. Zyger, did you get into the minutia of what you could do in Peace Walker? Did you get into base building? Did you get into going back and replaying missions and fulsoming people rather than killing people or incapacitating vehicles rather than blowing them up? Uh, I went back to replay a lot of old missions, mostly to grind and get better gear and whatnot. But as far as like the entire base building thing goes, I was kind of into it, but time was running out. I was just focused more on trying to beat the story for sure. the book club. How long, how long the story taking? Uh, I think I spent about 20 or so hours. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't know where my Vita is. Uh, it's in. buried under your fucking mounds of Amiibos. <laughs> good thing they're all... I'm, I'm sure they're all leveled up in Smash Brothers. So go, you can do whatever the hell you do with that. Level 50. God damn it, Zyga. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, that was something that... I'm not a big micromanagement fan. And I think... I, I always... The way I was talking about it, right, is like... I had respected what Monster Hunter was in terms of replaying the same missions, getting stuff, grinding out, gearing up, doing that different thing, but it wasn't my kind of environment in the same way I always talk about a lot of MMOs don't work for me, but DC Universe does because I love that universe. Uh, when, a, me, when Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker came out and suddenly it was to run back through and it was to full some out guys, to build out your base, to get a be better medical team, to then be able to make better medical equipment and vice versa with tech and arms and all these different things. That's where I lost my mind to it. You know what I mean? Like I, I think back and I, I think at the review event, I beat the game in 16 hours, the first credit roll or whatever. And when I got it, I put on an additional, what, like 60 or 70 hours on it. And it was that on the train every day, like, I, if I wanted a mission or I needed a new tank, or for me it was AI cores. It was going in, beating bosses again to get their AI cores to build out my Metal Gear at home to make it better. Uh, that was what kept me going. And then if I didn't want to go into a mission or I didn't want to do the battle, of course, I would sit there and just ping Wi-Fis as I went on the train so that I could, because you know, if you remember this, or none of you do actually, I'm an old man. What, what happened is you'd ping Wi-Fis and then new recruits would pop up on the beach and you'd beat them up if you could in the amount of time and then they'd join your squad and you get, it, it was all that shit that I just couldn't get enough of. And what is so <clears throat> exciting when you talk about, you know, with the rumors we've heard, for Metal Gear Solid 5, it's the fact that is there going to be more of that stuff? Are we going to be able to do more stuff? I, you know, myself, when I played Metal Gear Solid 5, and I can talk about it on June 9th, I tweeted the fact that this is like Peace Walker, and a whole bunch of people put out there more details on what that means and stuff, and that, for me, is mind-boggling. I, I guess then the question becomes for you guys, and mainly Curtis, since Steven over here couldn't even get past the cutscene because it was real life. Curtis, are you going to be excited if Metal Gear Solid 5 is more like Peace Walker? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, I'm like you. The the everything except for the main ops I found to be extremely, <laughs> extre extremely awesome. My favorite part 
maybe over the entire game were the outer ops. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. And it's it was kind of like uh, probing planets in Mass Effect for me, where it was like, why am I doing this? But it's so it was so addictive to watch my teams go up against these other teams and do like a simulated round. Yeah, uh, and I really, really, really uh, enjoyed that aspect. And I thought that it was funny when you did the Let's Play with Tim because I watched that before I ever started playing, and I was totally in Tim's camp. I was like. Uh, this is so much I don't think I could ever understand what's going on like this was really you know it was really frightening to me uh, in terms of someone who's never been part of the franchise or played anything in the franchise before uh, and then you're completely right in the video it really kind of eases you in that they, they only give you one team at the start I think it's like the medical team right and then from there they keep building it and they introduce outer ops later on and it got to be uh, really awesome. So if Metal Gear 5 is anything like that, where there's the micromanagement, kind of like almost God Simulator part to it, I think it would be really awesome. Now, Zyger, from what you got to taste, would you care about that? Would that be a good thing if Metal Gear Solid 5 was doing those things? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I love Peace Walker. I haven't played the other one, so I don't know what they're like. But if Metal Gear 5 is a lot like Peace Walker, I'll definitely check that one out when it comes out in September. That's when it comes out, right? Yeah, that's right. But that sounds like... Is Konami paying you to say that? Uh, not that I know of. You did that transition a bit too cleanly. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> I was thinking it all in my head when you were talking to uh, Curtis or Steven. Look or at someone. you. Look at what a what a pro Zagger is. No, no, yeah, like uh, that's the thing about it, and like that's what's going to be interesting. I think when people pick up five is I think sadly like with most of you guys, right? Peace Walker was overlooked at the time. It was on PSP, which had a big install base, but maybe wasn't the juggernaut of popularity. You know what I mean? So I think. I always thought it was such a ballsy move that Kojima was like, well, this is, you know, setting up the next part of the story. This is going to be main canon. This is going to be... Because if you remember Portable Ops on PSP, that's when they introduced Colonel Campbell and the first time he ever met Snake and all this different stuff. And I remember being like, as a fan, this is awesome. And then nobody ever fucking talked about it again. It never, ever got talked about again. And it was like, well, that sucks because that was part of a game that I loved but maybe wasn't even a real thing. Whereas then they do it with Peace Walker and they introduce Chico and they introduce Amanda and they introduce Strange Love. And these are all p characters that are referenced or, you know, for Paz and Chico are a huge part of Ground Zeroes, right? So to see it be a main chunk of that is exciting, let alone the fact that the parts that I loved and the reasons I loved Peace Walker, it seems like Kojima's interested and exciting in bringing over two Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, and what we already saw in Ground Zero is in a way, right? Because Ground Zero is set up if you have the context. Because who all's played it? Who's played Ground Zeroes? A little Curtis. bit, Curtis. Curtis yeah. has okay. What, the thing about it is, like, do you see those influences when you play Ground Zero, like the bite-sized missions, the little objectives? Yeah, I did, I, I, and it's kind of funny now that you're. I didn't even think about it, make the connection between Paz and Chico, um, but uh, yeah, now that makes total sense. You're going to rescue Chico in a cell, right? I think right. in Ground yeah. Zero. Yeah, Paz and Chico. And, uh, and, Cash, yeah. and if I remember correctly, maybe this is the trailer they released for Phantom Pain, but uh, did, can't you use the Fulton system in that one as well? So I'm assuming there must be uh, some base that you're sending them off to, or some reason for actually using the Fulton system. So. Well, again, I can tell you what I know about Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain on June 9th. And I'll do that on <laughs> YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. And of course, Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. News. I was trying to do breaking news. No, it was, it's, it was a weird thing with that. Because if you remember, like there was a social media window where you could tweet certain things out. And so I kept my tweets very middle of the road, right? Or like, here's what I'm doing right now. I'll talk to you later about it. And then other people like GameSpot did like a Q&A, which is great. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. They did a whole bunch of stuff. So... How much information is out there about Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain? I'm not sure, but yeah, you're, that's a good good uh, observation that if you're Fultoning people around, maybe you're doing something similar there. But for me, again, it was this fan service of these options. I don't know. I would have been into in other games, you know, base building, uh, getting a team, outer ops. Which if you didn't play it for some reason, you're watching this. You know, you would basically these guys you recruited, you put on the combat team, and then the combat team you could set out to other missions who would come back and bring you resources. Of course, they could lose these missions, all these different things. But basically, they're out there playing and able to come back and do all this different stuff. For me, the core of it was the fact that I understood throughout that game that I was building, you know, Mother Base. I was building Outer Heaven. I was building the Metal Gear that was one day going to turn on everybody. You know what I mean? I thought it, it's been interesting that. When we play Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 4, we get, you know, Solid Snake's story. We see how all this pans out. We know that he had to kill Big Boss. All these things happen. And then you play 3, and you're like, well, Big Boss is the hero, but now he's jaded with the government. Then you get into Peace Walker, and now we get into 5. And you have to imagine that 
5 is where we really see the fall from grace. I feel like Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker was this great story, this awesome story that built up things, but I, it was never like I saw Big Boss breaking down. Like he was about to go the evil route, or he was going to start making these crazy decisions. You can see his motivation building, but you don't see him get to that point. Whereas with 5, you have to imagine we catch up with the timeline and things get out there and get crazy. But I'm getting off track. I just fucking love Metal Gear. <laughs> Zyger, what haven't we hit on that you want to talk about? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're being very active in the Twitch yeah. chat, which which I love. So I'm not saying anything against that. What 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 haven't we talked about that you want to... What's on the tip of your tongue about Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker? Okay, the one thing I want to bring up... It's somewhere, I think it's like early on in the game where you're looking through the trucks and you see Kojima yeah, hit, yeah. hiding yeah. in the back of the trucks. I love that scene so much. Did you, yeah, because then you can recruit him and he's fucking awesome and he's amazing on your team. Yeah. That was, was there, great. I loved it. Was there anything you didn't like, Zyger? Uh, besides that some of the levels are super hard and I needed a friend, um, not much. Okay. I, I wish I knew that uh, there was more endings, or another ending from what I got. But, that, I mean, I'll just go back later and play through that. That was the weird thing, is I think the endings, and then, of course, the systems they put in, a lot of that, like, you know, again, I was at a review event, so I unlocked the Metal Gear, someone's there, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, and if you go over here, you can get cores. I'm like, that's awesome. And granted, now there's the internet and all this other stuff you get to jump into and try. That's asking a lot of anybody. Uh I think when you start having these systems that are so complicated, obviously they were spoon feeding them to people and doing all these different things. It was a way to get you in there, but I, I totally get the fact that I think some of the things were hard to wrap your head around maybe just at on the jump, right, as a, as a player at home. I can understand that. Uh, Curtis, what uh, what didn't you like about it? What, what are your qualms with that there, Metal Gear? Uh, one thing that uh, I kind of didn't understand being Metal Gear, I, I always understood Metal Gear to be more about stealth than anything else. And so when you'd go through a mission, you would get these kind of scores, but I felt like the scores weren't telling me how to get an S rating, mm -hmm. you know, or get an A rating. Right. Uh, so I would go through a level, but I think sometimes it would say 8 out of 10 if you kind of had like an like 8 out of 10 enemies killed or, or full tend out or anything like that. But other than that, I had no idea what I should have been doing. And I was getting like, for example, you get the shotgun, I think, on like mission 3. And I was like, this game doesn't like want me to even use the shotgun because then my... Because then my base is going to start, you know, falling apart because I don't have anyone to staff it because I'm killing people instead of sending them back out. But I also thought that that was kind of remedied by outer ops in general. You sure. were kind of saying it a little bit. It made you go back, it, even in main story missions, not only uh, other ops. Uh, it made you go back in the story and actually replay these levels to farm AI parts, to farm, uh, you know, people that you, you knew were better at research, you know, in mm -hmm, this particular mm -hmm. level. Uh, so I thought that, that that was really awesome. And then one thing that I also felt was kind of interesting was the pacing at the beginning. I felt like I, and I felt, feel like this might have been a problem with Metal Gear Solid 4 too, or as well, is that I felt like uh, I was watching maybe 10 minutes of cutscene and then I would get one minute of gameplay in the very beginning. Yeah. And that was, that was kind of disappointing to me. Sure, sure, sure. But they're easing you into it, Zyger. Yeah. No, not Zyger. Curtis. Whatever, whoever. That's you are. okay. I'm mad at Zyger in the chat. <laughs> Zyger be talking chat like ch chat shit over here, like I can't see it. Zyger, I'm onto your game. No, you. Were, that was another great point you brought up. You know what I mean? Just on the fact of how it all came together, right? And the fact that I thought it was weird that you're getting graded and they're clearly making you play. You know what I mean? Like you can play Metal Gear Peace Walker however you want, right? Go kill all these different things, but then you get a D if you're using a shotgun and killing all these people. But the fact comes down to, and this is something that I talked about in the Let's Play over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games, is the fact that I loved the loadout beforehand, right? So you could go through, do your sneaking mission, full, not anybody you wanted, but then if, like for me, when I was like, I want to go back and just get AI cores now, that's when I would load up in battle armor, come in with grenade launchers, and not care about the score at the end of the game. And I like that, you know, Ground Zeroes pick that up too, and you hope Phantom Pain will continue it, and bring back some of these ideas that 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 was a reason to keep me playing and i loved being able to go back and tackle a mission differently at, at first it, it is that off-putting thing of well what the hell like you're making me play the game this way and then yelling at me for playing the game that way but in reality like what it is is like well that's for later right like in the very very beginning metal gear solid peace walker is 
this narrative linear idea of your snake sneak around don't make any noise and then it becomes this open thing of like all right now you need this guy specifically you need to go back and get these vips by any means necessary and they let you go do those different things now big question for you steven yes your life has gotten in the way i understand you didn't get to play too much peace walker are you going to go back and play peace walker or are you just going to say well book club's done i'm out of here (laughs) Um, no, I will go back and play it a little bit. I like to, when I'm going to work, I like to switch off between my 3DS and my Vita, uh, you know, whatever's going, uh, when I'm going to work and I'm definitely going to, uh, play some Peace Walker after, you know, over the coming week or so, mm-hmm. uh, F, you know, for work. And so just to actually try it out and actually get to the point that I actually remember playing, back on my PSP save. So, and then go on from there. Nice. I, li- I like your dedication to it. You're, you're a good man. I take back all the shit I said about you. Um, I want to pop up, of course, the, these guys here are the three fools who paid on patreon.com slash games to be a part of this. They got the game for free. Then they get to be here and talk all about it. But I do want to give some love to the chat. A whole bunch of people over here are with us. Thank you so much. Bad Revolver says, Solid Snake is the saddest character in Metal Gear Solid. I mean, come on. Even Big Boss gets some romantic action. We need to bloom some love in the middle of Battlefield. Now, Bad Revolver, I'm with you. Uh, not about just not, not just for the sex reasons, to be clear. I'm with you that the fact that, yeah, Solid Snake totally gets fucked over in his story, right? And we're going to spoil now all of Metal Gear for you. I hope you guys played it. But you figure, like, I remember playing Metal Gear Solid 1, right? And first off, for a long time, not understanding that there was, you know, two endings based on the torture scene. Then the internet came around, a little site called IGN.com, and I figured it out. And so, like, when, he, when you end it with Meryl, you're like, oh, man. A great happy ending. And that's what drove me crazy about Metal Gear Solid 2. Is the fact that the game started and the only mention of Meryl, right, is when he's sleeping as Pliskin and you walk in as Raiden. And I was like, oh, what's happening? And then we get to Metal Gear Solid 4. They show Raiden, or I'm sorry, they show Meryl. I'm like, we're going to finally get, and then they showed Wedding Dress. And I'm like, she's going to marry Snake. It's going to be the happy ending we all wanted. And then, of course, no. She marries Pooper Pantser. And Snake... Snake just gives himself for everybody. He's in a microwave getting fucking burned to death. He's going to do all these horrible things. But you look at Big Boss... And Big Boss also a pretty sad character here. When you think about it, has to kill his mentor, who was everything he believed in, which is at the moment right where his ideals die. That's when I mean that's where he just checks out and like he's like, well, fuck this. I'm gonna make my own military with our borders. We're gonna be basically mercenaries. But then we're gonna get mad when people call us mercenaries, which I never really understood. But whatever. Side point. I'll be with Kaz the rest of my life. All these different things. Sure, he hits it off with a, a lady here or there, whether when they're in the jungles or maybe on the beach with a nice little, you know, sexy box that was always weird, too. But his story is sad as well, because he's just never, ever happy again. Never, ever, ever happy. So I don't know if I agree with that 100%, that he's the saddest character, but he's probably the saddest character. Psycho Mant is pretty sad as well. All of the the crazy-ass women in Metal Gear Solid 4, the, what do they call them? Crap. I'm blanking on it. None of you played it, of course, because you're monsters. So you can't even help me. The sirens is what I'll say. They'll tell me here in June. Uh, what do we got going on here? So people talking about the, the poop ending or doing this thing. Oh, here we go. Stoopy or Z one says, So I'm going to be experienced Metal Gear Solid 1 for the first time this week. What was your favorite thing about your first Metal Gear Solid experience? So like I said, Metal Gear Solid for me was the game that really, for me, I, and I talked about this on that IGN interview E3 last year I did with uh, Kojima where I gave him a painting, right? That was the first game where I was like, this is going to be the future of games. This is amazing. So when I think of Metal Gear Solid actually playing it that first time, I think about the fact that it was me and my best friend in our in my basement and passing the controller back and forth and back and forth and just staying up to some obscene, uh, obscene early morning time playing this game that had caught us off guard and just ran with it. You know what I mean? And I think... What did I love about it? I always come back to the sniper wolf battle. The fact that like I remember passing off to him, like, you're a better sniper, you have to do this. We He kills sniper wolf, we get up there, you get that long, awesome cutscene of her staring at the stars, bleeding out, you know, Otacon runs up on it, he's crying, All and like, he just peed his pants, which is kind of gross, I couldn't get that out of my head, but he runs up on her and he's crying, and it's just like, damn, like this is a fucking tour de force, this is a real package, and that's what Metal Gear always was for me. In Metal Gear, I knew I'd be getting story and I knew I'd be getting cutscenes and I knew I'd be getting gameplay and crazy tech and that's I think one of the reasons I love Peace Walker so much is that it's all of that and more is the fact that it has the base building it has the mech building it has 
the recruitment. It has yeah, there's just so many reasons to keep playing it. I love the fact that as a Metal Gear fan, there was a Metal Gear game that never had to end. That could go with me everywhere. And they put in the fucking crazy ass Monster Hunter missions and all this awesome stuff. It was fantastic. I, that, that, that's it. What else happened in the chat here now? Zach, are you even watching the chat? Are they being nice or unruly today? Uh, they're being okay. Uh, T. Starkley, T. Starkley, who was on the Games Cast, has I've heard of him. Though. I've he, heard he of him. He has a good question for you. You should All check right. that out. Lay, well, just give it to me. I, it's you give it to me. <clears throat> uh, as someone who hasn't played any of the Metal Gear Solid games, you son of a bitch, T. Starkey. <laughs> how much time would I have to invest into the series to get caught up with the series? Which games are essential? Just play Peace Walker. I mean, if you're trying to get caught up for Metal Gear Solid Five, I would play Peace Walker. I would play Ground Zeroes, and then I'd be ready. Like it's Metal Gear Solid Five is you know in the timeline catching up to that. I think that Peace Walker does a great job of distilling the information of Metal Gear Solid Three, at least the crucial facts, right? Of like, this was boss. She was your mentor. She went rogue. Now you kill her. Okay, great game. That now let's get onto the story in Peace Walker. And then Ground Zeroes is all right. We're the interstitial between Peace Walker and Metal Gear Solid Five. Here's everything you need to know. Now, when we sit down to play Metal Gear Solid 5 and beat it and do whatever, maybe it'll turn out like, oh man, if you had played this in Metal Gear Solid 3, you'd really understand it. But for me, especially with the, the clock is ticking, and as our good friend Steven over here will tell you, real life will get in the way of you playing through all of these video games. So I would say your easiest <coughs> route would be to knock out Peace Walker and knock out Ground Zeroes. And then, I mean, it's one of those things, if you really wanted to get nuts about it, PlayStation Plus is Ground Zeroes this month, right? You could technically read the story of Peace Walker 2 and jump in and go. Would I recommend it? No. Don't do that. Yeah, and I got the, this is Curtis, and I got the Legacy Collection, and that's a really good deal. Yeah. Um, and and I think that I could probably beat Peace Walker in another hour, and I think that would be like 15 hours with a guide. So it's completely doable. Oh, sure. Uh, in, in a reasonable uh, amount of time. And I agree that you don't really need to play Snake Eater if you do Peace Walker. Thank you. I'm glad you agree with me, because over here, Tyson Atair says, as much as you love Peace Walker, getting ready for V, you should still start with 3. If you want to. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, there's not that much time. You got to get moving. Right, Zyger? Yeah. Uh, Devin CM told me to play 3 before Peace Walker. I told him I would. I lied. Of course you did. <laughs> You're a liar. You're, that's all you do. You're like, I ain't got time to play all these Metal Gear games. You got 50,000 Amiibos behind you. Did you have time to wait? How do you get all these Amiibos? Uh, go to stores early, uh, st stay on the website, constantly refresh. So this is some, this is some Power Ranger shit where you're like, you gotta, you're like camping out, you're driving around, you're doing all these different things. Yeah. Are you buying duplicates or are you buying just one and opening them? Are you keeping one mint on card? No, I only buy one and I open it. However, every now and then, I would forget I bought one, and I'll buy it again. If I get a second one, I send it to you guys. Well, thank you for that. That's that's one way of doing it. When does the, when does the Yoshi Wooly one come out? That one's cute. Uh, I think that comes out... That, that comes out uh, in the fall for us, but June 23rd for UK. Okay. I was going to say for a second, I was like, you're, you're currently broadcasting from like a, a dark hole. I was like, where is for us? <laughs> Where are you, Stephen? <laughs> Do you need help? Yeah. We can send people. I'm just going by the light of my uh, my my window. So I understand. I'm just giving you a hard time. I love you very much. Thanks but, for caring. But uh, you were thinking of the Beauty and the Beast unit on the Middle Gear Solid Four. Oh, thank you. Yes, I was. Look at you coming through. Google. It can do anything. Yes. <laughs> Headphone fiend says you're in a vault. You're in vault 111 down there, waiting for everything to go on. Um, have any of you, have any of you guys watched Doctor Strangelove, like the old black and white movie from back in the day? Because when they started doing, or when they started calling that person Doctor Strangelove, or that was her name, it's like a total callback because the movie is totally about you know nuclear warfare and everything um, like that. So I re I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. I agree. I have no idea. I didn't watch that movie, but it makes sense. I like I like I like I. I, I, I remember when they did it. I was like, this is a thing, right? And then I never did any research because I was like, whatever. This girl's got short hair. She'll tell me everything I need to know. I was kind of wonder wondering how they got around like copyright or uh, trademark infringement on that one, but well, I remember they just ripped off the song that the, the Metal Gear Solid theme we all think about is a giant copyright infringement. So K Kojima's like, I don't fucking care. And Konami's like, get the fuck <laughs> out. So that's how that went, probably. Uh, Incognito Kitty says, Yeah, Greg, where do you see the future of Metal Gear Solid going after Kojima leaves, and where would you want it to go? 
what would you want Kojima to do as an independent? This is a very interesting question. Of course, I'm sure you know, if you're watching this stream on any of our kind of funny channels, uh, there's a whole bunch of crazy crap going on. It looks like Kojima's going to probably be out of Konami after this whole thing happens with Metal Gear Solid V. They're in this thing where they're racing him, da 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 What Konami needs to do with Metal Gear is what I think they're going to end up doing with Metal Gear, and that's not a goddamn thing. Like, it, it, I, think, I think you're going to see Metal Gear Solid V come out, and they're going to be like, all right, we're done with that. On to mobile games, on to the arcade stuff, on to the stuff that makes us money hand over fist, and we don't have to worry about it. The only reason you'd see Konami start doing something with Metal Gear, because they're not going to get rid of the franchise, clearly. I mean, they could do card games, they could do whatever the hell they want with it. The only reason I think they'd hold on to it is the fact that it's always in their back pocket. That, okay, we go and we do this, and we're, we're going to ignore the Western market, we're going to ignore consoles and you know PCs or whatever. If that strategy doesn't pay off immediately, they can be like, all right, well, start work on a Metal Gear so we can give something to these people they want, and they'll come back and keep doing it. As far as Kojima, my hope is that if all of this happens, Kojima does leave Konami, that he would go, I'd, like to, I'd love to see him go the Kickstarter route and do something small and simple, and this is my vision for this game, and no one can get in my way. You know what I mean? And Colin always brings up the fact that he could do that, but he could also go like Amy Hennig, right? And just be like, hey, I'm free, and EA, Activision, you name it, is going to come to him and be like, we will give you a team, we will give you millions of dollars, go do this. But I still think that in his head, he's got to be sick of the corporate rigmarole, right? The fact that he just left there, where he made this thing, made this product. You, for all intents and purposes, we assume Metal Gear Solid Five to him is his master work, and now at the very end, right, they're taking his name off of it and removing it from promotional materials. And that's going to leave such a bad taste in your mouth that you're like, fuck it, I want to just make a game and the market exists for me to make whatever the hell I want. And so I want him to go make whatever the hell he wants. If it's a stealth action game, great. If not, I got this game called Volume from Mike Biffle coming out, it's pretty much that. So let him go make another game that's, you know, influenced by the sun. Zyger, what would you like to see Mr. Kojima do? Uh... I kind of agree with you. I'd like him to go to Kickstarter, make something new, something different. I mean, I love what he's done with Peace Walker, and I'm assuming he did a great job with the other ones since I haven't played those. But yeah, it would be interesting to see what he, type of game he would make on a Kickstarter. If he would do something similar or something different, I just want to see what he's going to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Curtis, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I think Kickstarter. I just recently funded my first Kickstarter with ukulele, actually. Um, and I think it's I think it's actually really telling. And I think you guys had a games cast about this, but all of these established developers are starting to 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 move away uh, and try to own their own IP, which I think mm -hmm. is uh, a, a good thing to do. And then Stephen, from the cutscene you saw, what would you like to see Kojima do? I actually would like him to make another. Uh, giant robot game like he did with oh, Zone of the like Enders. Oh, like Zone of the Enders, sure, yeah. Because yeah, I cool. really, really enjoyed Zone of the Enders. Uh, and the uh, and they also, they actually spinned off with like an, an anime and everything like that. Right. I really would just like to see him do another like giant robot mech game because mm -hmm. the movement and everything of that game was pretty much one of a kind yeah. back then for the PS2 because it was like really good graphics, but it was really, really fast and awesome uh, gameplay. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. I guess the, I'll go down the line real quick, and I'm going to ask a simple question. Is Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker the greatest game of all time? Steven, you're the expert. Tell me. Uh, yes, I uh, definitely. You think it's the greatest game of all time? Yes. I no, sold you on it? No, what? Yes, from your passion. Yeah! You have, Party, we you got this one, game. we got one. <laughs> the from, uh, power we have yeah, the from um you like your passion and you what you always say and how you explain it and everything it pretty much makes me believe like you know like from his point of view this you really believe this this game is like everybody has their own opinions but it is like i think it could be very well that's what i like to hear Thank you very much. Your checks in the mail. I'm going to refund your Patreon <laughs> money. Uh, Curtis, what do you think? No, because Ocarina of Time exists. Oh, Ocarina of Time is really good. I can't yeah. really argue with that choice. That is a fantastic game and a good choice. And Zyger, is Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker the greatest game of all time? Uh, I can't pick favorites, but it is high up there. It's one of the greatest games I've played. Okay. It may or may not be the greatest, but it's up there. All right. Well, gentlemen, Thank you so much for your time and supporting us on patreon.com slash 
kind of funny games. And of course, thank you, Twitch chat, and people watching this on YouTube later for coming in and caring about us. Uh, remember, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is out on a number of platforms. It's PSP classic kind of thing, so you can get the PSP game, you can put it on your Vita if you want. If you still have a PSP, you can play it there. You can get it on the PS3 Legacy Collection. You can get trophies there, which is why that's the version you have to play on, even though you really just wish, before Konami implodes, they would be like, hey, here's the Vita version with trophies, because that would be the fucking end-all be-all and the best thing ever, but they're not doing that, so fuck them. Um, remember, of course, that there's plenty of other Metal Gear stuff coming up here on this channel, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames, and youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. June 9th is a Tuesday. I get to tell you all about playing Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain. I will be doing, first off, a giant podcast you can get as a video on YouTube or an audio download on your mp3 service of choice where I will be talking to someone else who's played played through it with me will be talking not with me don't worry it's not I mean, that wasn't a leak like in the same room we were at an event someone else who played Metal Gear Solid 5 will be talking about it and then I'll also publish that video on the embargo and wake up and go to twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and answer all of your questions live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games so lots of Metal Gear Solid 5 coming up. Remember, I'm going to still spend all of August playing Ground Zero again to get amazing so that when Phantom Pain comes, I can just be the ultimate snake. So, there's a lot happening. I hope you understand that. Uh, of course, before we go and close out this month's kind of funny video game book club, I need to tell you what the next video game book club entry is going to be. Everyone needs to start playing, drumroll please, Colin has the rhythm, I don't. Everyone needs to start playing the original Legend of Zelda on the NES or wherever you can get it on digital platforms. Colin Moriarty will be taking that book club at the beginning of July. You'll see it, we'll tweet about it, we'll put out images, we'll keep on task. It won't be these three guys. We're going to have different three guys this time. Not that we don't love these three guys, but different people from last month will do it. So that was a whole bunch of plugging and not even the fun kind. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you so much for watching this. It's been my pleasure to serve you. Now, don't worry while I awkwardly go over here on the other screen and put up Teen Witch. Why not? I'm king, and they know it. Actually, I probably put, shouldn't put up Teen Witch because I want to put it on YouTube, and then they'll just be like, that's somebody's clip, and I'll be like, YouTube, get out of here. So instead, <laughs> we'll just put up the thanks video. Bye! Bye. Bye. See ya.